everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. We have our blood markers taken reasonably regularly and compare them to the normally accepted ranges. Recently, my wife found a website which challenged some of these ranges and more importantly, provided a deeper explanation of the reasons for the numbers. We decided to compare our results to their recommendations. The document is a blog post on the Levels Health site. In this video, I will go through what I found in this exercise. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing our personal experience and update. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the blog post that we went through, the ultimate guide to understanding your cholesterol panel and metabolic blood results. As they say, normal range does not necessarily mean optimal, and we want to aim for our optimal number rather than an acceptable number. The other thing is, if, for example, my blood sugar is going up, I want to do something about it now, not wait until it crosses an arbitrary threshold and then have medication. For the blog post, they sought the advice of eight leading metabolic health experts about what we should aim for. Here are the experts that contributed. It includes some of the leading researchers in diabetes, insulin and sugar, such as Dr. Robert Lustig, as well as key practitioners like Dr. Mark Hyman and Dr. David Perlmutter. The website is Levels Health and can be found at www.levelshealth.com. We will have the link in the description. There is not agreement about the optimal range in all cases. And in the blog post, the recommendations for each doctor is given for each measure. But in general, the ranges are much stricter. Even normal levels may point to an incipient problem that should be addressed. For the blog post, they took input from the eight advisors. They compiled the feedback and provided a summary of the consensus. I think that this is a key point. The aim is not just to have more strict numbers, but to explain the meaning of the blood markers, which are all interrelated. I will go through the markers where we have results. They do cover other markers such as HbA1c and hCRP, which are also really important. Reading through their thoughts on the meaning of these numbers was very interesting. The first one is fasting glucose which is your blood sugar level unaffected by your last meal. One point that a couple of the doctors made is summed up here. This is a trailing indicator, and by the time it is high, it implies that insulin resistance is already there. The consensus is that fasting glucose should be less than 90 milligrams per deciliter, but aiming for the 70s to the low 80s is best. Here are our numbers. As you can see, mine is not good, whereas my wife is at the top end of the optimal range. Next is LDL, or low-density lipoprotein cholesterol. This is often implicated in the buildup of plaque in arteries. From Dr. Hyman, he says that we measure LDL because we can treat it with drugs, not because it's important for heart disease. In fact, LDL cholesterol is not a good predictor for heart disease. A point that Dr. Lustig agreed with, saying that unless LDL was very high, over 200, it was not a factor. Total LDL values can be misleading as it is made up of different types, with the small dense variety being more problematic. Their advice is to keep LDL cholesterol below 100, but less than 70 is optimal. They suggest that the triglyceride to HDL ratio is more important. My number is 121. This is on the high side, but given the comments, I am less concerned about this. Apparently, LDL is calculated from your triglyceride count, and my wife's triglycerides were below 50, which is too low to be accurately measured. So she did not get an LDL number. Triglycerides. These are a type of fat that is carried by very low density LDL or VLDL in the blood. Once a triglyceride is dropped off, it becomes LDL. Per Dr. Hyman, he sees patients with diabetes who have normal LDL and total cholesterol, but very high triglycerides and low HDL. And he sees these markers as more concerning than high LDL. As he points out, assessing triglycerides and HDL is critical. The summary is that triglycerides are very important marker of metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance. 
The target is lower than 150, but optimal is less than 100 or even lower. So here we are doing okay, where we are both in the optimal range. HDL or high density lipoprotein cholesterol. HDL carries cholesterol back to the liver to be processed. So it is viewed as the good cholesterol. From Dr. D'Agostino, high HDL shows reduced cardiovascular risk. In particular, for a given level of LDL, varying the HDL can increase the risk of heart disease tenfold from high to low. HDL goes down with insulin resistance and low HDL is associated with heart disease risk. The optimal range is above 60, but more is better. Here we are both in the optimal range. Total cholesterol. A measure of LDL plus HDL in the post, total cholesterol gets a very short mention. The summary is that it should be less than 180 milligrams per deciliter, but that it needs to be looked at in the context of triglycerides and HDL. Both of our total cholesterol levels are high, although my wife's is only marginally so. Total cholesterol to HDL ratio. As we discussed, LDL is not the best predictor of the risk of heart disease but the cholesterol to HDL ratio is better. Their recommendation is for a ratio of less than 3.5 to one, but better to be around two to one. We both have numbers which are in the optimal range with my wife being very close to the best of two to one. And finally, triglycerides to HDL ratio. As Dr. Hyman says, this is the best way to test your insulin resistance without an insulin response test. It is also the most powerful predictor of heart attack risk with a 16-fold increase across the range. In the summary, they say that this is the marker that you should focus on. The optimal range is less than 1 to 1, with normal being between 1 and 2 to 1, and above being high risk. We are both okay here, but as always, my wife has a better number than me. So what did I learn from this exercise? My LDL cholesterol is high, but based on what they said in the report and other sources, for example, Dr. Lois Garden's video on LDL, I am not that worried about this, which is also true for my total cholesterol. My fasting glucose, although it is in what is considered the normal range, which goes up to 120, is problematic and points towards insulin resistance. However, Dr. Hyman also said that triglycerides to HDL was the best predictor of insulin resistance. And for that, my number is okay. So some conflicting data there. Still, I definitely want to get this below 90. So that will be my goal before my next checkup. I would like to do this without taking a supplement such as berberine, which explicitly lowers blood sugar if possible. Overall, I found going through the post and checking it against my numbers very useful. It gave me a better understanding of how those markers are related and which ones are important. Mm -hmm.